Hi, my name is Ilya Rabgin and today I'm going to show you some of the most toxic and potentially lethal plants in the UK. This video is in the context of mountain biking, so as you watch this video, try to put yourself in the context of where you're riding, what you're wearing at the time, and where you may need to push through on paths that are overgrown. We all love to ride our bikes, especially when it's warm and sunny. In the summer, riding bikes out and about, roaming our beautiful green and pleasant land in this countryside, cycling those bridleways all that vegetation in full bloom, lush and green. What I'm about to show you can equally be applied to just walking in the countryside with your friends and family. This is especially important for young children who may be running through the undergrowth or catching an eye on some brightly coloured berries. So keep watching, it could save someone's life. Well, as I found out very recently, the English countryside is not so innocent as beautiful as you may think. Some of the UK plants I'm about to show you may look innocent enough but can cause great harm if eaten or even just touched, just in small amounts. In fact, most plants in the UK are poisonous. It's just that we do not get harmed by them because we do not ingest them. We leave them alone, they leave us alone. However, the plants that I especially want to bring to your attention, as just mentioned, are the ones that are contact poisonous. I will also talk about the plants that do have poisons in them which you must not eat, get into your eyes or bloodstream, but it's the contact poisonous ones. Contact poisonous means that if you come in contact with them, touch them, rub any part of the plant, you can potentially be poisoned. These plants have within them photosynthesizing toxins which can cause the skin to blister and burn. There are also plants out there with alkaloids in them which can enter the bloodstream via cuts on the skin or your eyes and again can be potentially fatal within a few hours with no cure. Now most of you watching this are likely to be mountain biking and be mountain biking means you are likely to be riding in shorts most of the year. And if the weather is good, you're likely to be wearing a short sleeve jersey too. I mean, what could be better? Sunshine, dust, riding our favourite trails. And that's what makes mountain biking fun, right? I expect if you're really having fun, you also have a few cuts and bruises on your legs too from your various riding adventures. So if the conditions and the circumstances are right, and you're in the vicinity of some of the plants I'm about to show you, they can do something like this to you. The toxins from my compilation list of UK plants can leave you very ill, likely a visit to the hospital, and with some of them have long lasting effects on you for weeks or even months. Easily stuff up. Now before I show you my compilation of toxic plants in the UK, I have to make it clear I am by no means an expert on plants and this video is for information only. If you're not familiar with a plant, I say treat it with respect and certainly do not eat it. I compiled this information from other YouTube videos and some research. I thought it was especially important to share this information with you because when I came across this video, the top 10 poisonous plants in the UK, This Could Save Your Life by Hidden Valley Bushcraft, I was very surprised, very, very surprised. I was surprised at the number of plants that can potentially be harmful and how quite easily, as a mountain biker, you can come in contact with them while riding your mountain bike out and about, merrily pushing through the undergrowth to continue on a path. I do urge you to have a look at that video. I will leave a link to that video in the video description below. As mountain bikers, we do tend to wear shorts most of the time and we ride through undergrowth as part of the sport. So, this is where I think knowing which plants can be toxic and absorb through your skin is really important to know. I've lived in the UK all my life and not had any issues myself, but that seemed more luck than judgement having seen that last video. So, let's start off with the plants that I think can pose the most potential issues of being poisoned because of the very nature of mountain biking and riding single track in the UK. The plants that concern me the most have photosynthesizing toxins in them. These plants do not have to be eaten to be poisonous, they just have to be touched on your skin, and that's what potentially makes them so dangerous. Imagine you're riding a narrow, overgrown path and all that vegetation is just getting in your way and you're brushing past, pushing through on your handlebars. I've done that. You could be unfortunate enough to fall off your bike and fall onto, for whatever reason, or brush up against a toxic plant. And before you start thinking of stinging nettles, stinging nettles are not on the deadly toxin list. Yes, the nettle's defense mechanism is a poison, just not a deadly one. And if you've been stung by nettles, then you know what, what it feels like and can be quite uncomfortable. 
Now I know because I've fallen into a big patch of nettles when I was a kid. In fact, I was on my bike at the time in a field at the back of my house when I lost balance hitting something in the grass and fell straight over sideways into nettles. And I was only wearing t-shirts and shorts at the time. Man, did that hurt. Had a red rash up all down my leg and arms. Yet, it hasn't had any long lasting effects. But the plants with photosynthesizing toxins do have long lasting effects and you certainly do not want to go falling on those. The type of toxic chemicals in the plants I'm going to show you are photosynthesizing fosorulans. Well, it took me a few takes to pronounce that properly. Fosorulans produce a dermatitis in humans by making the skin hypersensitive to sunlight. So what does this mean in real life? Here is a photo of skin which has come in contact with that toxin after a few days. Not very nice, looks pretty horrible, and shows why you should stay far away from these types of plants. Now these types of toxins start to react in about 15 minutes after contact and need exposure to sunlight or UV light to initiate a reaction. We're not going into any great detail here as it can be a subject in its own right, but basically the fosorulans interact with your DNA in your skin, disrupt the ability to produce the necessary proteins and protection against UV radiation. With further continued exposure, it can cause severe burning and blistering of the skin. It is known that the scarring from the blistering can last for many months along with continued oversensitivity to sunlight. And if you get it in your eyes, you could potentially be blinded too by this toxin. So if you think you've rubbed up against any of the following plants, it's advised to get out of the sun and apply cold water immediately. And if you have any sunscreen on you, apply it to the affected areas immediately. This will prevent further UV reaction should you still be outside exposing the skin to sunlight. If you think you've got the same sap from the plants in your eyes, wash your eyes out immediately with cold water and put on sunglasses. And it's not surprising that fosorulans also are very dangerous if consumed, causing liver damage and death. So what are these plants that can cause burns like these? The first and most recognisable of these photosynthesizing toxic plants is the giant hogweed. It is not only found in all parts of the UK, but it is also in many other countries around the world. It is not a native plant of the UK, by the way. These plants are notable for their size, easily standing a few metres above of a tall person. This plant is actually in the same family as the parsnip and the carrot, would you believe it? While parsnip, also a family relative shown here, looks very similar to its cousin the hogweed. It too has photosynthesizing toxins in it, so you can get the same toxic reactions from it like hogweed. While parsnip is recognisable by its yellow flowers instead of white ones on, like you find on the hogweed. So back to the hogweed. If its height does not give it away, then the following features help indicate giant hogweed. It has a thick purple green stem covered in small hairs. The small hairs can be found also on the back of the leaves at all levels. And this is what makes the hogweed a particularly dangerous plant. Even if you were to brush past this plant, like on a footpath in Bolton shown here, these hairs can also pass on the toxin to your skin if touched, though not as much as direct contact with the sap in the plant itself. And the thing that's really important to know about touching this plant is you won't get any obvious ouch that hurts feelings. So you could be brushing up against this plant for a good few minutes with no obvious contamination occurring. You could be a few miles away from the contact point before the reaction to the toxins start to occur, which can make the identification of the poisoning more challenging. Even in early spring where new undergrowth of this weed is popping up through the litter on the ground, a few inches above the ground, it can still be very harmful. So watch where you walk, especially if you're wearing shorts and low ankle socks. Next up for contact poisonous plants is what a plant called wolfsbane or monk's hood. There are two versions, Napulus and Carmichael. The Napulus is the wild version seen here. Now this plant contains acronite acryloids, which is very toxic if consumed and to a lesser extent absorbed through the skin. So like other contact poisonous plants, do not get it sat onto any cuts on your legs or anywhere for that matter. And like the previous plant, the hogweed, be careful what, as you brush past it when travelling on a path. And of course, do not eat it. Last in this contact poisonous list of plants is a very common plant in the UK, and that is the plant ragwort. In fact, I have some of this weed growing in my patio, and I've pulled it up with my bare hands. I did not know it's such a potentially a very poisonous plant. I will certainly be more careful in future now that I'm aware of it. 
its toxin, another form of alkaloid called ferrocyloidine alkaloid, which can again can be most toxic if consumed and to a lesser extent absorbed through the skin. And so like previous contact plants, pushing through undergrowth on waste ground, wild areas in shorts could in be a cause of skin irritation should you come in contact with these poisons. People have complained of irritated skin after handling ragwort, therefore it's recommended to avoid skin contact with this plant altogether. The next plant is the hemlock water drop wart, and it can be commonly found on river banks or waterways. For a very inconspicuous looking plant sitting amongst other plants, it's seen as the most poisonous plant in the UK. It does not have any photosynthesizing toxins, but it has in it sap several alkaloids which are not processable by the human body, hence why it's so dangerous. If this enters your bloodstream or your eyes, it can kill you in a few hours. And like I said before, there is sometimes no cure. Is another hemlock, version 2, Conin macalorium, and it's called just hemlock to the layman like me. It looks very similar to the previous hemlock, but can be a lot taller. It has the same toxins in its sap, and so just as deadly. It can grow taller than a person, and its more obvious indication as to what it is, is the telltale sign of that purple coloration like in the hogweed on its stem. The next plant has sap like caustic soda and can burn you very badly. And when I saw this, I immediately thought of Alien the film, just in plant form. This plant is called a spurge or europhobia. Now, Nick Goldsmith in his video said that in medieval times, if you had a boil, they would administer the sap from this plant to burn the boil off. Well, that is some serious sap for a plant. If the fictional alien creature Alien came back as a plant, it would be this plant. This plant is mainly found in gardens, but it is in the list of wild poisonous plants because it can be found out in the wild too. The foxglove. This I know was a poisonous plant from my childhood, but I do not remember how it was poisonous. It should hopefully be a commonly recognisable plant for most of you, and it's seen all around the UK. Apparently the poison in the foxglove is an inhibitor and stops signals from your brain to drive your heart. So if you did not die from your heart giving up on a ride up a very steep long hill, then eat some of this plant and your heart will stop for you. The cuckoo pint plant. I do know this plant, again thinking back from my childhood. I knew it just as a cuckoo plant and again told stay away. Again, not told exactly why it was dangerous, but just told don't touch it, don't pick it, leave it alone. The poison from this plant, if eaten, affects the kidneys in your body and can kill you if you have a fair quantity. The plant you see here is a very common plant found in old woodlands carpeting the ground. I do recognise it now it's been pointed out to me. I have seen this qu quite a lot in Scotland and elsewhere uh, written in the UK, though I did not know its name nor I did not know how poisonous it was. This plant is called Dog's Mercury. And while it's not seen as a contact poisonous plant like the hogweed, its poison can be transferred to your fingers if you rub the leaves. That poison can then pass to your mouth should you tend to touch your mouth or touch anything you've eaten. So do be careful of this particular plant. The next plant I have not seen in recent years, especially in Scotland, and that is the deadly nightshade plant. The colour of the berries can vary. The berries can be yellow, purple, black, red, orange, and any combination on the same plant. It is deadly because like the hemlock plant, all parts of the plant have a poisonous alkaloid running through it. And did you know deadly nightshade is a relative of the potato plant, the pepper plant and the tomato plant? Wow, all in the same family. And all of them are poisonous too, except the parts you can buy in the supermarket. The final plant in my compilation list of plants I'm going to show you is in fact a yew tree, the English yew tree. I've always been fascinated by this tree and I do remember climbing one regularly when I was a young boy. I was fascinated by it because its wood apparently was used to make excellent bows. But even back then I could not see how because of all the yew trees I climbed, I could never see a, a section of wood long enough to make a bow. Anyway, it's the UK's oldest tree and there's a yew tree in fact in Scotland called the Fortingale yew which is reputed to be 5,000 years old. That yew tree can be found in the village of Fortingale in Perthshire. 
It's also the most poisonous tree in the UK because it contains a toxin called taxin. And this is one of the reasons why the yew tree has always been associated with death throughout our history. And one of the reasons you see a lot of yew trees in churchyards. Again, like the previous plants we talked about in this video, its poison is made up of a complex mixture of alkaloids. So I think you're getting the message by now that any plant that has alkaloids in its system can be very, very dangerous to humans. All parts of the yew tree are poisonous, so do not make the mistake of using it to make pine needle tea. But, and I did not know this until I did my research on this subject, in fact the red berries of the yew tree are edible. But there's also another but. If, and only if, you do not eat the green centre of the red berry, as it's just as dangerous as the rest of the tree. So, nice looking tree, but do not eat it. If you got this far in the video, I thank you. Now, you may have noticed in this video I've not talked anything about mushrooms. And the reason I've not talked anything about mushrooms is because I do not know anything about them apart from a lot of them are poisonous. I do know which ones are good to eat, so I stay away from all of them. And one of the reasons I've also not included them in this list of UK dangerous plants is because they're easily recognisable in their many forms, and so I think you can avoid them pretty easily, and so do not cause a concern. I mean, I see them everywhere when I'm out riding, I can see it's a mushroom and likely dangerous. Especially those red ones that appear in children's fairy tale books, which I do find a little bit ironic. My conclusion on learning about these potentially dangerous plants is that, like mushrooms, if you're not sure exactly what the plant is, so do not confuse it with similar looking plants like a primrose leaf and a foxglove leaf. Do not touch it, just stay away from it. I do hope you found this video useful, and if you did, do hit that subscription button and to show your appreciation along with that like button. Do watch the other videos on this subject in YouTube as it could save you or someone you know their life. Thank you very much for watching, keep safe, keep well, and I'll catch up with you guys next time.